Yo, what is going on everybody? It is your boy Patman here, back again with another video. This one is going to be a little bit different today. No, it's not a Halo video for once. I'm actually doing something for all you new streamers out there. This is going to help you get your settings underway. And if you're having a lot of problems in Slobs or in also known as Streamlabs or in OBS and you're noticing a lot of drop frames or people are complaining you just really just don't know how to fix it this guide is going to be to help you guys i recently helped somebody out and it really just inspired me to make a video just to help as many people out as i could so this will be a new series if it does well i will do more of these in the future but as you guys can see i'm in the new version of streamlabs so everything's moved on to the sidebar right here and we're going to go down here in the bottom left corner to settings and there's going to be two main areas that I'm going to talk to you guys about in this video. And I'm going to go further in on a future video if you guys do enjoy it. But if you do enjoy this video and it does help you out, leave that like and subscribe for me. I usually do Halo content if you guys are new here and you're just seeing my channel for the first time. So if you guys love the game series Halo, click that subscribe button. And if you guys want to see more of these, click that as well. So first things first. You guys know how to get your stream key, I'm sure, so we're going to skip that. But, video. So your base canvas resolution is going to be whatever you're playing on. So right now I'm on a 4K monitor, so I have it at 3840 by 2160 I play on my Xbox One X on my 4K monitor. And I have my output scaled resolution to what I want my stream to be. And I used to have this at 1080, but then I considered something and this is something you should consider too not everybody can watch a stream in 1080 just because my internet can handle 1080 doesn't mean that you know i should stream in it because not everybody can handle that kind of bit rate and we'll get into bit rates later i'm going to show you guys a chart so consider that so i bumped mine down to 720 still looks great 720p 60 frames per second right here you have three options Bilinear is by far the least CPU intensive, but not the best looking. Bicubic is just as good looking to me as Lanxos, and it's way less CPU in intensive. So I go ahead and use Bicubic, and my common F FPS is there at 60. The next thing we're going to go to, and this is going to be where we sp spend most of the time in the video, really. Uh, the next one would be the output. Now you want to make sure this says advanced, and you're going to go to streaming. And audio tracks is going to be one. And this is really important right here, your encoder. So this all depends on your CPU. The, you guys need to figure out if the bottleneck of your computer is your CPU or your GPU. Right now, I'm rocking a RTX 2080 and a Ryzen 7 2700X. So they're both pretty good in their respective classes. Now, the nice thing about the newer 20 series model of nvidia graphics cards is they have this nvenc new option most of you will either see this nvenc or times 264 software the times 264 is the cpu intensive one so if you have a good cpu you want to use that and your graphics card isn't that good you're going to be using software if you do have a good graphics card maybe a 1050 1060 1070 1080 something like that you're probably going to be using this nvenc and if an, if you have a newer model I highly recommend just using the new because it is really, really forgiving on your CPU. So I'm going to use that. And if you guys are also using this, uh, then it's pretty straightforward from there. Uh, your bit rate, and I will go back and show you what I, I would put on these softwares because a lot of people will be using that. But you want to enforce your streaming encoder settings. And your CBR is going to be your option here, controlled bit rate. First things first, I want you guys to go to speedtest.net. You could also just type in speed test on Google and it will come up. Google has its own speed test service, but I use this one. I think Ookla or something like that is the name of the company. You just click go. And you're going to run a quick speed test on your internet. Preferably be hardwired, guys. But if you must be wireless, then so be it. You know, not everybody can run a hardwired connection. But what you really care about is your upload speed. Download speed does not matter. My download's high, but my upload is pretty low. So you're going to let that run. Okay. And there's your upload speed. So that mine is 23.5. 
All right, so after you guys do your speed test, say you have a five upload speed. Well, five megabits per second equals about 5,000 kilobits per second. So some people are like, oh, well, then I can handle 1080p 60. Well, no, bitrate should never be higher than 80% of your upload speed. It says that right here. So you always want to leave a lot of headroom. So if you only have a five megabit per second kind of connection, you should probably only be running 720p 30 and that's really pushing it if you're still getting drop frames you may have to bump it down to standard def and that's always an option guys just because you can't do high definition don't be discouraged a smooth looking stream and a decent personality goes a long way over a very fancy and choppy stream you know if you want to do 1080p 60 but it's choppy that's not a good viewing experience for your viewers so do what your internet can handle. So at 20 megabits per second, I could go all the way up to 1080 because I have that much headroom. 6,000 is the max that Twitch will go to anyways, says it right there. So it doesn't really matter. That's would be like, if you have a 12 megabit or even a 10, I would say you're good to go on 1080p 60. But like I said earlier, consider what your viewers can view as well. So I recommend doing 720p 60. That says to do 3,000 to 3,500. I do about 4,000 on my bitrate. You know, you could you could do at least 3,500. And for this, I put it at anywhere between 3,500 and 4,000 is good for 720p. I put mine a little bit higher just so I could squeeze more out of it. Keyframe interval is really important. That's gonna be two for Twitch. That's really important. And my preset is going to be max quality because it is not very CPU intensive. Like I said, I'm running. If you guys look down here in the bottom left again, it shows your CPU usage. When I'm streaming, I'm not going over 8%. If you guys are noticing down in this panel that you're getting a lot of drop frames, like 1% to 2% isn't bad. But if you get a lot of drop frames, something is wrong with one of these settings and this video should help you. If not, I'll do a more advanced one. I choose max quality profile is always going to be on high and I have both those checked. The GPU selected is the zero GPU, which is my default GPU. Unless you have two GPUs, you shouldn't have to worry about this. And the max B frames would be two. So that's for hardware. Now for software, this is where it gets interesting. So I still have that checked. And if you guys do want to rescale your stream, you could do it from here as well. And I recommend doing that as well. So you would do, if you're doing 720, 1280 by 720, 1920 by 1080 for 1080 P and a controlled bit rate, put in your bit rate. And then right here is where you're going to spend most of your time. If you're having a lot of skipped frames, this profile or this CPU usage preset, the higher, the less CPUs use. So ultra fast should not use much CPU at all. If you go too slow, it should use more CPU, but it probably wouldn't start until you start streaming. You won't see a difference. So if you're, say you're on fast or faster, say you're on faster. If you're still getting frame drops, bump it down. Maybe go down to medium and try that out. And if it's even worse, then go back up and see. But usually the higher it is like ultra fast should be the least amount of cpu usage and that's going to be where your main thing is that along with your bit rate and your resolution those three things are going to be the main things probably causing your stream to drop frames as a starting i would go to very fast see how that works for your cpu see, monitor your usage down there if you get above 50 percent, then i would definitely bump it up and this is always going to be on high your profile and tune i do not mess with so i hope this video helped you guys out like i said if it did please leave a like comment down below if it did and let me know if you guys want to see future videos helping you guys out with future streaming setups i hope you guys all have a wonderful day get to streaming it's really fun get out there show the world your personality and i will catch you guys in the next video i'm your boy patman and i'm out